Hi guys, it's Cab Over Gary back. Uh, so no good news on my truck yet. Uh, I am waiting on a head still. I think I have one coming this time. I've ordered two. That uh, one I ordered uh, last Tuesday, they called me this Monday and uh, said that uh, they couldn't get it after they said they could on Tuesday. And then I ordered one Monday I got called yesterday, I said okay, I ordered one yesterday, and I haven't heard that I couldn't get it from them yet, and they took my money, so hopefully uh, that one's going to come through, but uh, but yeah, I guess uh, as I'm waiting on stuff, I got a project that uh, I haven't done too much on the shop with, it's uh, a 4 to 8 in, I did a video or two on it, and that was supposed to be a project with my kid but uh it's taking him too long to want to do stuff on it so uh i'm gonna do a little bit today on it i'll take it along and show you what i've run across on this thing and uh issues i'm having so as you can see i got it pretty torn down at this point uh, one of the things is I ran into this that is the last main bearing. None of the bearings look too good. And they uh, scarred the crank up some. Not too bad. But uh, definitely needs touched up. And uh, yeah, when I uh, went to go take the mains off, so that I pulled the cam out of this block, the uh, block looks good. And I popped all the liners out, and they all look good. Um, so all that, the block and stuff, it looks good and doesn't look like I have a problem there. Um, and I still got Ford stamp valves in it, so I think the valves are original in it still. But somebody was in the bottom end, and uh, the main bolts, uh, my half-inch DeWalt 20-volt impact, wouldn't undo them. I had to use a breaker bar. Uh, and that thing, I don't know, they say it's 1,200 pounds, but realistically, it's probably 600 foot pounds. I don't know. Uh, so I think they were over tightened, but I think more of the problem was had an oiling issue. Uh, so I need to address that. These, uh, from what I'm reading, do have a pickup issue on the oil feed, so I need to make sure that's all good when it goes back together. But uh, another problem I noticed is I have the head here, and I saw these. And I'm like, huh, they're over here. So here's the head gasket. I'm like, oh yeah, there those are. They're blocked. They put the head gasket on this way instead of that way. So whoever did that uh, definitely didn't do the motor many favors. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it hurt it too bad, but uh, that's another thing that I gotta address. I got uh, some mechanics straight edges that I'm gonna clean up the deck and then uh, see if I can measure that and see uh, if that's all good. Hopefully that is. But uh, yeah, let me get uh, show you how I'm gonna do the crank. Oh, so another big problem is I cannot find a machine shop that will touch this. Uh, I can't find a machine shop that will touch a 350 right now either because I have one of those that I was wanting to get some stuff done on. So, uh, they all say they're six months to a year out, and they all say that they don't want to mess with a uh, 8N. They want to just do standard stuff. They would take the 350, but I could, would have to like drop it off six months from now. So uh, I don't know if that's the case in every area, or if it's just this part of Texas, or what's going on there. But uh, yeah, that's uh, an issue right now for me. So I'm gonna show you some uh, homebrew machine things that isn't 100% correct. It will get by, 
This thing is a 2.2 liter, I think, like six to five compression, so pretty low speed motor. So I'm sure that this, these uh, techniques will probably last me the rest of my life. So uh, let me show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, yeah, so this is what I did. I uh, took a piece of sandpaper. I'm starting with 150 because there's some good sized grooves in it. So I'll start on this middle one. And what you wanna do is you wrap it around there and you take a shoelace and uh, We'll do that again. Wrap it around. Take a shoelace. And wrap it around a couple times. Get it spread out pretty evenly on here. And then what you want to do, you just do this. The reason why you're doing it with a shoelace like this, because that's doing 360 degrees of pressure, equal pressure around it. So, uh, yeah, it works pretty good. This is gonna take a while because it's hard steel and uh, just not gonna pull off a whole lot whole very fast. So I'm starting with 150 grit. I'm gonna go to 220 and then 320. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna double check, see what some people online are saying. Uh, but I, I, you want some grooves on or some place on there for the oil to have a place to stay kind of like cross hatching on a cylinder so all right let's see what that did so as you can see it already cleaned it up quite a bit yeah i could barely feel there's still a couple grooves in there but not much so, I'm gonna feed this back under. And then, uh, I gotta order bearings and stuff still for this, but I'm not gonna do that until I'm done with this. And then I gotta measure each journal, uh, see where I'm at. Uh, I might have to order two bearing kits if uh, I come up with two different sizes. We'll just have to see on that. Sorry, I know I'm in the camera there. Alright. So. Uh, it's going to do this for a while. Uh. I'll be back when I move on to the next step. Okay, so I think I'm done with the 150. That's what it looks like. I can't feel any grooves in it. Uh, there's still scratches in it from the 150. Uh, so that started looking something like this, which is all groovy. This is the worst one. This is that last bearing. Uh, that will be okay. So yeah, now I'm gonna switch over and do some uh, of the 220. So something else I found is the more wraps around it, the better. And new sandpaper tends to stick some. Like it is there. 
I'm gonna put another wrap around it, I guess. <clears throat> There we go. I want this star to seem to go easier. Well, this one's grabbing quite a bit. So, I think it's going to take about a half hour each one. So, luckily, it's, well, I guess it's the same on an eight cylinder. I guess, luckily, it's not a six cylinder. Looking pretty good. Nice and smooth. Glassy type look. So yeah, that's how I'm doing these. I'll bring you back when I get them all done. Pretty much the same thing all through them. Gonna take you over what I'm gonna do to the head. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I have these wire brushes I use. That I use these wire brushes and the reason why is because they're softer than the steel these are 100% pure brass a lot of the brass brushes you buy are not so be careful there they're just brass coated but I'm just gonna go clean up some of this stuff Okay, once I got it clean, uh, so there's still, you can still feel it's a little oily, so I'm gonna get my scraper set out and I'm gonna scrape it some. So I have these, these are actually snap-on, I don't know if you necessarily need a snap-on one, but uh, these have worked pretty good, they don't really catch edges on stuff. I've had these for quite a while too and they still are sharp. I don't like using the little cookie wheels because I feel like they remove material. That's my personal preference on that. get to that I'm gonna wipe it down with some brake clean uh, let me go grab that I didn't have any brake clean but I have some acetone I'm doing this just because the next step uh, I want it to not gum up my sandpaper so the more of the rubber crap you get off the better So now that that's all wiped clean, that's my biggest sanding block. These Dura blocks are pretty neat. Uh, I've had them for years and they hold up good and they're easy to grip. And the sandpaper with them is pretty high quality. All right, now I'm gonna go long passes one direction, then the other. I've been sanding for quite a while now. It looks like there is some loose spots in it. After I sand it with the block, I'll check it with my straight edge. And 
just gonna take some sandy. I'll be back when I get this done. Alright. So, I'm calling that good. I was wanting to get this area a little out, but I can't feel anything there. And uh, this is a little eight away where that head gasket was on wrong. And then this is staining. That's deeper than I need to go. But yeah, deck's flat. Looks good. Pretty sure it's gonna seal up pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I gotta take the valve train out of the block and do the deck of the block as well. And then uh, I'll get bearings ordered and new sleeves and pistons and uh, get it all put back together. Hopefully I have a running tractor in the next couple weeks. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think of this project. Uh, let me know if you guys like uh, seeing this type of content as well. I mean, I know that I'm mostly a cab over truck page, but uh, I do like anything old iron. So uh, this is a, another hobby of mine that I'm doing right now. And uh, yeah, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a good day.